Ian, do you remember where we left off last week? I do remember where we left off. Which, which is why I'm going to kickstart the recap. Hello, everybody, and welcome to hey. Morgan Myth. <laughs> Go right ahead, my friend. I am more than happy for you to do that. No, you're so much more prepared than I'm, I am. Please, I'm handing, ladies and gentlemen, making his Estera recap debut tonight <laughs> is Mr. Ya Boy Big, Ian, a.k.a. Bren. <laughs> This Take is what away, happens when you don't shut the hell up. Okay. Uh, my mom told me this would get me in trouble. Hey, everybody. So <laughs> when we last remember, right, the gang, they had this tumultuous conversation uh, as they went through a whirlwind of emotions on Violet's barge, Elger barge is what I like to refer to it, as the dismantlement of it began. Phelan in their wonderful knowledge and connections reached out to several groups to come in and help start with the project as uh the group also kind of went through a range of supportive acts as violet took everything in and uh pretty much settled on what's happening after a very long day of work and a lot of confusing and emotional conversations the troops sat down for the evening to rest as they go into the next day to figure out the next step in the middle of the night, Bren was stirring in his sleep. He was finding it hard to reach that comfort that he so reaches for every single night as he got a feeling, a notion, more so of a message pointing him in the direction of the, the silt wood, a cry for help. Maybe as he looks to the sky and he sees a sign that reminded him of his wonderful friend and dragon star. What does he do? Does he get up and leave in the middle of the night? Does he wake everyone up? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Ian. See how it's... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the spot, ladies and gentlemen, we that was not <laughs> at all something that was expected right. to happen. But that's just Imagine way, the way we roll Imagine a picture of my ass right here, and this is just me pulling everything out of it at this moment. <laughs> <It's> just... <laughs> hey, man. Welcome to my every week. <laughs> Welcome to my every week. Thank you so much, Ian. That was amazing. Um, I think that that puts the rest of you on notice, by the way somebody's going to have to be prepared for next week now. Love it. I love it. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much <laughs> for that amazing, wonderful, awesome recap. Uh, yeah. We're going to dive right back in, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, the shenanigans now. Um, we are waking up. So it's worth mentioning, Ian, that the um, the dream that caused Bren to awaken was only perhaps um, an hour before sun's rise. So not leaving in the middle of the night, but it is, of course, your call. If you wanted to wake up now, you could wake up people just a little bit early before sun's rise. Uh, if you would like, it's entirely up to you what you would like to do at this point, sir. Oh, we're jumping right into it. Okay. Um, we are. <clears throat> I think the first person Bren would go to is Sisk. He kind of just like, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's a uh, very abrupt awakening. Their body kind of tenses and they and they are awake. Yes, what's what's wrong? What's um I don't know why I woke you up first, because you have no idea what's uh happening. <laughs> um it's just uh, you're, you're, you're the <laughs> shh, keep it down. I'm having a moment. Um so I got this feel this dream, this feeling that um we need to leave now to Okay. This, the, to the mountains, the Storm Song Mountains. Storm Song Mountains, yes, Miko, because I always get them confused. Yep. Heard. Uh, we need to leave to the Storm Song Mountains. I, I think I think a friend of ours is in danger. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, then let's did go. I tell you about the dragon that we had? See, that's my fault. <sighs> I should have woke up one of them first. They would know. 
uh, and he's he's a little frantic, but he's not panicked. Like he's he's trying to convey the sense of urgency of like, hey, this needs to go now. Um, it's also uh, worth just uh, correcting that the pole was to the siltwood. The yeah. storm on mountains is further north than the siltwood, and there is a distinct difference in the direction for that. Um, you're feeling it pulling the towards the heart of the siltwood, and not necessarily the storm song. I, I okay, I got you. I th I was thinking like in this moment, Bren would would know, and the biggest issue would be the boat, and so that's why he's like, "There's something happening." Um, so into the siltwood. Um, there's a pseudo dragon, um, that we met. Very nice, wonderful. Their name is Star. Beautiful. We helped them birth another dragon. Um, uh, there were eggs. There were more dragons. Okay. Um, it's, uh, I'll be right back. And then he kind of like just... shuffles out of where, yeah, he just starts waking everyone else up. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what I was going to start doing. I, I need someone I'll else here who was there to help explain this. <laughs> oh, uh... uh, this very, remember you guys were in a very large encampment, right? The engineers that had helped, uh, the friends of, uh, Phelan that had helped dismantle the ship that had gone like all pretty much into the, uh, night. Right. And so, a large campsite uh, was basically constructed for you guys to all share. So there's like, what, 14 people basically um, here in the campsite at this point. There's a couple of large pavilion tents. You guys, you know, have access to your own uh, individual one person slash two person tents for however you guys wanted to handle your sleeping arrangements. So it's very, you guys are all conveniently in a relatively close proximity. Um, and I would actually give it to Beth if you wanted to wake up in response to the emotional urgency that Bren is feeling. I was going to ask. Um, yes. I think she would wake up and just sort of sit up and listen to whatever they're doing. Um, so as Bren then, turns around to go and wake somebody else up, he looks over and sees eighty sitting up. Hey, get it. We gotta go. Um, we like we uh, the group. We have to go now. Uh, okay. What's going on? Okay. Uh, Your little dragon friend Star is in danger, I think, and um, we want to. We should probably pack up to the Siltwood. So. Um, we're not the people here not in danger I think right Bren no so these people are fine if you want to help your little dragon friend let's we need to skedaddle come on oh, right right right, right. <laughs> I'm gonna start patting everyone start getting get, getting them up uh when i wake when we wake up mira i want to ask like do you want to wake up phelan for this should we let why are they they were sharing a together? sleeping bag <laughs> were they whispers in there yeah how do i find how do we find y'all <laughs> jesus christ i don't know um <laughs> you tell me hey, i gotta go to work <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Um, the best part about that is we've not really fully established what Mira's actual work life has ever been. She may she's probably never actually worked at an actual <laughs> job before. That's probably true. Yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I think they were near each other sleeping. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'll wake them up. I don't know if they're going to come with, but they, I think, still have the Sending Stone, so I'll just let them know that we have to, I don't know, do what, something, and then... Scud off. Um, if they, yeah. I'll, I'll use those words precisely. And then if, uh, if they come with, great. If not, they, we can at least contact them once. <laughs> the entire time, AD is just looking at you with the biggest smile on her face because <laughs> she can feel your discomfort and is just delighted by it. Love that. I'd like to think um, that all of us in a moment kind of just like went. 
<laughs> I mean, we could wait like three seconds. Is everything good? <laughs> Would you all get out of here? Go, go out of pack something. I don't know. Get out. As she is saying, get out uh, in the, the pavilion tent uh, walks um, uh, Ren. Um, and you can see that she has a uh, like small rabbit uh, that she caught to start preparing for breakfast. She comes in and sees everyone kind of in their urgent state. Uh, and she just looks at Bren and has this like mildly annoyed expression on her face. And she just says, okay, what happened? Nothing. Everything is not fine but um, we are not directly in danger. <clears throat> our friend, um, I, I got a dream last night and I think one of our friends are in danger. So we're leaving. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so what's the plan then for everybody else? Are we coming with you? Are we bringing the very large wagon led by rams carrying a few you know, tons of material. No, it's not that kind of trip. Um, unfortunately, if you would like to come, we can use the hands. I feel like we're going to be running into something pretty bad. Okay, so then we're splitting up. Is there an urgency or need for whoever is leading the wagon of materials up into the mountains to be protected from any dangers. Violet! He's just gonna, like, he's gonna call for Violet because this interaction is not working with his sense of urgency. <laughs> Violet's stumbling over, just rubbing the sleep from her eyes. Uh, hey, uh, so uh, we're leaving. We're going into yep. the Silwood. Long story short, Dream, Star, potentially in trouble. Your aunt, very scary, has questions. Please answer them. Right. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. Um, if there is this yeah. urgent situation and there's dangers to be had in the Silwood, the cart is at least going the wagon with its two enormous mountain rams is going to have at least go through part of the siltwood before it gets into the storm song mountains the mountains are dangerous in and of themselves we don't yet know since we're splitting the group uh we don't yet know when we're going to be meeting back up so i'm just curious if my skills might be better served protecting the wagon yeah i think so i think we'll go ahead we'll clear the way you stay back and protect Phelan and, and everybody else um Oriana no. too and and just make sure everybody gets up safe we'll we'll go ahead clear the way and help our friend and as long as yeah, everything no, goes no, well we'll circle back and we can okay. meet up with Mac okay. again uh do you want me to send Lyra with you or should I bring Lyra to help me I think it would be best if you kept Lara with you. So you, the more eyes you have and to keep Great. everything safe makes sense. Sounds good. Okay, fine. Done. I'll make sure that everybody gets to their destination safely. Just out of curiosity, and she looks squarely at Mira as Mira is like preparing herself to go over and wake up Phelan. Like just as Mira is about to turn to go to wake up Phelan, she, uh, just steps the few feet. She closes that few feet gap and kind of locks Mira eye to eye and says, are we bringing all of these people up the mountains? These friends of them? Why are, why are you asking me? I have no idea. Well, I'm asking you because I need to know how much effort I should put into protecting friends of your significant other. I'm fairly certain they can handle themselves. Um, focus on Oriana, Phelan if you have to. I think the group will be fine. Okay. That's what I needed to know, thanks. 
And she just turns and looks back at everybody and says, well, I guess breakfast is out. I'll go start preparing to muster. And Ren just kind of very efficiently turns and starts walking out of the large tent. Thank you. You just hear a, yeah, yeah. If Phelan has not already awakened by all of the commotion, I Fair don't know. Enough. Phelan's a pretty deep sleeper generally, but also um, there was some revelry last night and Phelan partook pretty heavily in said revelry. So I think Phelan is like unconscious at this point. I will go over and try to shake them awake. You do. They... Uh, huh? Oh, God, my head. Oh. Good morning. Wait. Glances to the edges of the tent. It's still dark out. Yeah. Uh, something came up. The five of us are gonna take care of it. Um. They, they start to sit up. Oh. oh, um, sorry, I'm still waking up. The five of who now? The original five, I guess. Me, 80, Violet, Bren, Sisk. Bren had some sort of a dream or something. I don't know. I didn't get all the details, but there's a problem in the Siltwood with friend we made along the way and they need our help okay um sure of course yes you have to go and do that uh, yeah uh, um so does that mean that i need to make sure that everything gets up the mountain yeah okay um ren is staying she can help um, oh, great. That's tremendous. All right. I think she's a little annoyed about it. Um, I get the feeling she's annoyed at I, everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm glad it's not just me. She's helpful, but not my favorite person. So that's, you know, whatever. She's Violet's aunt, so it's fine. Yeah. She's important to Violet and she's yeah. important to everyone else. So. Uh, sure. Um, I was going to have my friends go and head back, but if we don't know your situation and when you are all going to be making your way back up to the ship to help get things started, I may ask one or two of them to come with. Uh, they're people that I trust. They know... They know about me, so I should tell you how much I trust them. That's all right. Yeah. If you trust them, then I trust them. All right. Okay. Well, you I'll, still um, uh, you still have the sending stone that I gave you? Yes. I do. Here, you should probably... That only works once a day. Just write your name in the back of my book. It'll be a backup if something happens. Like my whole name or just like my first name or... How do you sign your name? I don't know. Just write your name in the scudding book. Yep. Yep. Okay. They open to the page that you indicate and, you know, grab the offered quill and write things in, close it up, hand it back. Done. Nope. We're good. You, um, be careful, okay? We will. We Glances around, see, looking for 80. What's 80 doing? She left. She's not watching this bullshit. <laughs> No oh, fucking okay. way. <laughs> okay. She can feel the... <laughs> 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 it's 
It's killing. She's <laughs> the awkwardness is like nauseating. <laughs> they um, Phelan like sits fully up, starts stretching. They like do a couple of the toggles up on their their tunic and stand up. Um, they seem to just be like trying to figure out like there's definite sleep fog going on in them right now and so they seem to just be trying to figure out what they should be doing right this moment I mean you don't have to be awake yet I just wanted you to know that we're taking off I mean I'm awake now so um, I'm not going back to sleep anytime soon <clears throat> Thanks for letting me know you're leaving. Yep. Just turn and <laughs> and walk away. There's like a, a hesitation pause and they just go and head over and they look like they're headed towards uh, um, trying to make some coffee. Mira will grab their elbow before they <laughs> get too far. <laughs> and give them a goodbye kiss since the chat is demanding it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, not because the chat. chat's demanding it. <laughs> <laughs> nice to know that chat can influence the game. Um, they, they, of course, return the kiss. There's a, a little bit of... You can tell on their face that there's a sense of relief from that. And, um, you know, they embrace Mira pretty heavily before letting her go. And you hear just the faintest whispered, that was good. And they turn and head back to trying to figure out coffee. Mira will <laughs> walk out and try to find the rest of the group. In the meantime, what was the rest of the group during, doing during that very awkward interaction? Stacked up Standing nearby. out in front of the tent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 80's just doing sprints. She's got she's to keep her mind <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, I'm still hung up on that was good. Um... <laughs> All right, if everybody's gathered together. Okay, so um, more explanation, right? It was a dream. I, I just, it just felt, I don't know the direct danger, but I um, I do know that Star needs us for something. So I think it's best that we uh, get it going. Yeah, lead the way. I, where All did right. you see them? Uh, I'll I didn't, I didn't really, it's more so of a feeling that's drawing me. So, okay. Um, you good? Everybody's good? Yeah, are you good? Uh, yeah, yeah, you all are looking at me funny, so. Okay, and then it <laughs> turns around and it begins the hiking montage. Like to think so, I'm on my any way. any preparations that you guys would like to do before gathering up? Is there any additional interactions that you would like to have to do with any of the other NPCs? Oriana can divine where we've gone, I'm sure. Maybe we'll write a little note. Gone to save. Small friend meet up soon thanks nobody's gonna wake up oriana that's fine um i wake her with a kiss which is less awkward than what my sister just did just kidding you were muted there ian we couldn't hear you you're muted in video i, I have nothing to say that was perfect i just, Continue on with the kissing of Oriana, I guess. <laughs> no, no. That's for a future episode. Yeah, we'll work into that. Eighty just trying to make Vi jealous, that's all. 
Um, what now? As, as you guys begin to pack up your things, um, the sense of urgency that you that Bren has been feeling since waking up and since the dream and everything begins to subside a little bit. Part of that has to be from the um, notion that you're actively doing what you think you need to be doing in this moment, um, and there isn't any there isn't anything holding you back from from doing that. And Bren's kind of singular focus for that purpose uh, helps to settle some of what he had experienced in that dream. But as you guys are just getting everything gathered up um, and there's the, the last few, you know, goodbyes, um, you, Bren, roll for me a wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, 11 11 everyone keeps walking Bren kind of stutter steps a little bit and then stops I apologize Miko I have advantage on wisdom saves do you mind it depends on what that advantage is for is it advantage on all wisdom saves or is it advantage on specific wisdom saves it says on all wisdom saves all right. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, that's so much better. Uh, that's a uh, twenty-four. Okay. We'll keep with the the stutter step thing, but rather than what I originally was going to say, and you just stop and go catatonic for a second, you kind of stutter step, uh, but manage to keep walking. Um, your vision kind of clouds over. You know uh, how sometimes when. Um, when you're like working out a little bit too hard, your vision kind of starts closing in on you uh, a little bit. Your peripheral just kind of turns to, to nothing and you feel like you're on the verge of passing out, but then you hold it back and, you know, prevent yourself. That's what happens with Bren in this moment. And inside of Bren's mind, he feels he feels someone else. It's not his thoughts, and he knows that it's not his thoughts that start encroaching into his mind. He realizes very quickly that there's a presence in his mind right now that is urging him forward and he just hears, well, more so he feels a sense of, good, this is the right thing to do. It's like a, an encouragement from someone else happens somewhere deep in his mind. He doesn't know what it means, but he knows that it's not his thoughts. You all see uh, Bren kind of stutter step and stagger a little bit. And what is Bren's reaction that everyone sees to this? Um, he's going to try his best to kind of keep it, keep that feeling to himself. He's a little bit concerned now because it doesn't feel like a thank you for coming. It feels like a yeah, keep doing this, which can be a little bit nefarious. But he keeps going. What kind of emotions would AD pick up on? Because I know that's the next question that Beth's going to ask. Um, there's a there's there's a small bit of confusion. Yeah. Noted. Does anyone does anyone do anything in reaction to seeing this happen for Bren? I don't know that I can notice 
mechanically. <laughs> oh, right. I yes, have a disadvantage your to insight, your perception though. kind of sucks. Yeah. We should um we should pick up the pace and uh kind of keep moving. Brent kind of picks up the pace a little bit more. Okay. As you head along towards the Siltwood, every step leading you that direction feels to Bren like an additional step of urgency. What he had kind of resolved himself as you were leaving the camp starts if slowly, very, very slowly and incrementally turning into a bit of anxiety about it. Can't quite pinpoint why, but there's definitely an anxiety there, which of course bleeds over into 80, as 80 can feel that quite acutely. I think she would um, kind of walk beside you and um, attempting to be somewhat discreet would just uh, sort of, hey, are you okay? Yeah, no, I'm fine. Brent, hmm. do we need to be worried? I don't know yet. Okay. I mean, I'm a little concerned now. It's a very, a very strong feeling, but I don't, I don't know yet. Okay. You know, if you try to like lie about your feelings, I, I can tell, right? He just looks at you. He's like, "Yep," and she'll kind of fall back. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, yeah, he's he's telling the truth. I don't know. And he just kind of keeps walking forward. (laughs) You guys get, you know couple of hours outside of uh, or onto the journey the suns have risen uh, fully at this point and their light is brilliant across the sky there's streaks of clouds everywhere at least the traveling weather despite the urgency of the situation at least the traveling weather is nice and Violet as you gaze up into the sky at one point you actually see Lyra flying overhead just seemingly scouting flying around it's comforting for Violet in a way because Violet was so used to that for so long on her journey back from the hollow and maybe an hour later the sight of her leaving and obviously heading in a more northerly direction takes over. That tells Violet at the very least that they've probably started their journey, even if it was so much later than when you left. Yeah, that's comforting for Violet. Violet's feeling a little anxious, a little nervous about going into the woods. Um, So it's definitely a comfort. As you all move forward, taking you ever closer to the Siltwood, you can see it off in the distance. You can see its mists still rising perpetually as it does. The magic of the place warranting a little bit of fear and a little bit of trepidation from just the sight of it. And... I'm curious, has Sienna or has Sisk ever traveled into the Siltwood before? Um, I don't think so. I think that (laughs) Sisk probably has kept mostly to like the cities and towns and stuff when they were, you know, when we were traveling or when they were um, working for the man. they probably stayed away from uh, the outdoors, out of doors, so just like me.
as you get closer, Sisk is attuned to a slightly different experience than the others. They've all lived either near the Siltwood for a very long time and traveled into it to varying degrees. But for Sisk, this is a little bit of a different experience. You've been close to the Siltwood plenty on the times that you were visiting uh, or staying with Bren. So the look of the place doesn't necessarily bother Sisk. But as you get close to the edge of it, and now this is like a good five, six hours into your journey, at this point you're coming up on the edges of the Siltwood. As you get close to it, Sisk, you can feel as though the trees themselves are moving. Not that they're moving from one location to another, but that they're shifting. You swear that you see one of them actually change its branches orientation in the same way that you change your facial features. You're muted. I didn't hear that. I'm scowling a little bit. I don't like it. <laughs> the trees are watching me. God damn it. <laughs> trees are definitely watching you. Speaking of somebody else watching you, Lord Gazumba coming in hot with the raid. Thank you so much, Gazumba. Hope you guys had a good time uh, over there. Um, welcome in, raiders. We're just getting into a little bit of unnerving action here. Hopefully we'll... Hopefully, uh, well, we'll see how everyone starts reacting to it here in just a few moments. Um, as Sisk feels this, 80s anxiety level, of course, increases a bit. Um, why don't we get a charisma saving throw from 80? Absolutely. Um, 15. That's good enough. Um, okay. You're used to feeling other people's anxiety. Um, the fact that the entire group is kind of feeling anxiety on different levels uh, is probably pressing on to 80 a little bit more than usual, but you're doing a fairly admirable job of keeping it, um, keeping it at bay for the moment. You would pick up on Sisk's sudden uptick in anxiety, though, as you guys approach the edges of the silk. Does Bren do anything in particular at this point as you approach and come in? I think he would, <clears throat> I think he would definitely slow his pace and kind of um, go into a, like a scouting mode to kind of see if he can notice anything. Okay, go ahead and give me a perception check, please. Lord Jesus, it's an eight. Come on. Uh, it is worth hail. mentioning earlier. I think it was Raven Sir a Knight gave you a hail. No, but I feel like uh, I mean. Yep, Raven gave you a hail, and everyone has an advantage right now from Varl as well. So you've got two. Everybody else has one. I'll, I'll use that. I'll use that for this one. Okay. Come on. Come on, Miko, we got to talk about this. Like, we change we, dice, dude. Change the I dice. I have, and it still sucks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's, what was that? It's a nine. Um, I want to go home. I'm home. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> your your farm is just you know due north a few miles if you wanted to <laughs> is brand is Bren just gonna say fuck it and head off home now no no we're gonna ride with that nine because we have to because you have to <laughs> um yeah so Bren is in a state of not being able to see the forest through the trees right now Right. He's kind of looking at the place largely and not paying attention to the details of where he's leading everyone. And 
as you move into the edges of the forest itself, as you step in, everyone else, not Brenring, but everyone else can feel that there is something different about the place versus the last time that you were here. And I should say everyone else excluding Sis, because this is Sis's first time. So for Violet, Mira, and AD, you can tell very clearly right away that something is different. You don't know what that something is, but 80 in particular, it's almost like a feeling that something has changed. There is a more ominous presence here that you can't quite identify yet. You just know that something is wrong. Bren is a little bit too singularly focused on needing to get here to really pick up on that. And I think 80, at the very least, can probably tell that he is so singularly focused. I don't think she's going to say anything, but she's on high alert. Violet will grab 80's hand. You okay? I don't know, last time we were here, it got really, really close, you know? Um, just whatever we run into is stay close to me. Yeah. I, I think we're gonna be okay. I mean, last time we didn't know what we were doing. Now we're wiser, we're hotter, we can handle it. There was so much blood last time. I don't think I, know, I could do I know. I don't think I could do it again. I'll stay close. Okay. Does the hand holding linger as you move in? I mean, 80's not going to drop it. <laughs> I don't, I don't spray know. All of, <laughs> to spray all of you down. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Just I'm only terror. asking for the chat. I'm asking yeah. for the chat, you guys. Look, I, just... I don't think I don't think 80 would drop Violet's hand because uh, Violet has gone through some shit and is clearly scared. So I think she would hold on as long as Violet wanted her to, uh, or until she trips over a stick and you know needs to catch herself. Thought it was just like grabbing your hand to get your attention and to talk to you. That's where I was coming from. Ah, well, that's awkward. <laughs> As AD isn't letting go of the hand, Violet is no. just. <laughs> if Violet, if AD doesn't let go, Violet doesn't let go. But that was my intention oh my with grabbing your hand. <laughs> oh, this is. This is great. <laughs> we may or may not be holding hands. How about that? Can we just like, you know, call it? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. Um, as you move into the forest and have this sensation of things being different than they were before, Sisk very clearly almost I mean, better than anyone else in the group is able to, to notice. Very clearly sees a small woodland animal scurry from out from underneath of a bush. Looking like maybe a raccoon or something. Kind of hard to make out some of the details. And then pass behind a tree, continue moving just barely out of sight for half a second and start bounding away as a rabbit. The rest of you don't really think anything of that. Even if you did notice it, you don't notice that kind of detail that falls into Sisk's perspective. What kind of things live in this wood?
tear that? Things. Well, that was a fun rabbit. Maybe? I don't know. I just, like, if we keep moving, things will probably be okay. Mm, that's not reassuring. That's, that is what I am able to give you right now. <laughs> Perfect. All right. I, I like that we're on the same page. Thanks. We're just going to um, pull out the wraps and kind of turn to Violet and be like, Violet, they, these were in your dad's stuff. Do you know anything about them? Miko, do I know anything about them? No. No. Um, 80 needs to make a charisma saving throw, though. Okay. 16. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that this is happening in proximity that 80 can see quite clearly the raps and hear the question and all of that. And 80 feels a sensation that she had forgotten what it felt like. You hear a gasp in your mind. And you feel the ring on your finger kind of tingle with a magical sensation. Cool. Um, does it feel any, I don't know. I mean, I know, I know we had like fully connected through it, but does it feel any stronger or different than last time? It feels less chaotic than last time for sure. So, cool. I mean, that's not nothing. Okay. Does it feel like it needs to talk or something? Or can I like just hold on to that thought and focus on everything else that's happening? Do you want to try to create a connection with the ring in this moment? No, no, I don't. I would, no. Okay, okay. you don't have to. Mira will be a little familiar with these, and I think she's just gonna be like, well, uh, I think they're probably magical somehow. Maybe they can help, so I'm gonna... Uh, it feels weird in here, so I'm gonna put, put these on, and maybe they'll help if we run into any danger. You think they'll help? I left them for you guys, so please use them. Thanks. As you begin to put them on, um, you have to attune to them. That requires a short rest. Um, can't really do that while you guys are traveling through this dangerous situation. So you're going to need to probably stop and just chillax for a minute um i'm assuming everyone is going to be okay with that you know probably need to break yeah, to eat or something anyway yeah you guys have been traveling pretty hard at this point um so it would make sense for you to at least stop for a short uh, a short rest um does that change 80's perspective on the ring out of curiosity. Miko. <laughs> Just asking. It doesn't have to. It's entirely up to you. I want to. <laughs> if 80 doesn't want to, you don't do it. I think genuinely that uh, 
she she doesn't want to get involved with her own shit again right now when there are uh, bigger fish to fry. Okay. As you're sitting there attuning to these, um, attuning to these wrist wraps, Deb, they feel familiar and yet foreign. Mira is reminded very clearly of seeing her mother wear wraps such as this that were identical, you know, minus the bloodstains anyway. And she saw them so many times over the years that, you know, your mother was a little bit more, shall we say, active in um, more dangerous aspects of her life as a member of the clergy. What kind of sin, what kind of feelings go through Mira at that at this point as she's doing this? She doesn't want to wear them necessarily, but she feels like if they can help, she's gonna use every advantage that she can get. Um, Ascendant and clergy be damned. Uh, and so I think she's got sort of a, a steely resolve to her as she's putting them on. Like she hates what they symbolize, but she will use it because it'll help. Okay. You attune to them without issue um, and gain the, the benefits of them. I think Mira would feel a sensation of power, of strength that comes from that attunement, because she knows what they do. She's very familiar with the power of them, or at least of the ones that her mother had worn, and what they can do for the magic that a person wields. And as she finishes she doesn't become like drunk with power or anything, but she definitely feels stronger in this moment. And that comes through the emotional connection to 80 as well. As the rest of you are kind of finishing up your meal, um, the anxiety of everything still kind of kicking in, 80 would feel what her sister is feeling through the emotional connection that she has. And maybe AD is reminded too of the times that she saw her mother putting on her wraps. But you finish your short rest and just as you are about to get up and go and get back on your journey, Bren kind of urging you along, feeling that keen desire to find his friend more so than perhaps the rest of you. All of you see the trees around you shift and change now. It isn't just Sisk anymore. Sisk feels it more profoundly than the rest of you. But the forest just shifted around you. I need for all of you to make either a survival check or a perception check, please. Either one of those checks would work. It's 20. What about the rest of you? I got a 13 perception. I have expertise. I thought you were disadvantaged in perception. It is insight. 
but I have a disadvantage. Oh, okay. Good to know. Can I use my passive perception? Yeah. 15. I used an advantage because I initially rolled a four. Um, so I ended up with a 16. A 24 total. Nice. Everybody did really well. Um, you all, whilst the circumstance is obviously going to be unnerving and you can absolutely react however you have your characters react however you think they would, all of you can feel the stress of that shift, not from your own stresses of experiencing it, but it's almost as though the forest itself has manifest anxiety and stress. And this is some kind of a, a coping mechanism in a way of shifting and changing to handle whatever this experience is that is happening inside of the Siltwood. You guys feel that? Is that normal for here? They don't know. It's different. Do you think it's because of the Nostromo that came in here? I hope not. So we just but keep we going? Can... Yeah, we'll keep going, but everyone stay aware. You all did well enough that you're not lost from the experience. You don't get twisted and turned around, which you think was probably the intention of the forest then. You still know the direction that you need to go, or at least that you that Bren thinks you need to go anyway. And you continue on. You can feel the heaviness within the Siltwood. The magic of this place is always burdensome, but this additional almost anxiety and stressful experience that the forest itself seems to possess is working a little bit extra upon your psyches. And you jump and are startled by the sounds of flapping in the treetops above. You see the shifting of leaves, you see the tree branches quake and move, um, but you don't see the source of it. Bren, as he looks up, he feels in his mind an emotion of relief. It's the same experience that he had when he first communicated with Star. It's that kind of telepathic communication. The empath the empathic push of emotions, because you know that Star doesn't communicate in the same way as other creatures do. And all of a sudden, Bren feels the impact of Star slam into him, and the two of them roll upon the ground as Star becomes visible from his invisible state that he was in. And Bren basically gets tackled by this small dragon creature. There's an embrace there. Um, and Adi can see, feel the sense of relief from the both of them. Yeah, the huge smile on Bren's face is just like, out loud, he's like, hey! <laughs> you know, trying to, convey that connection he rifles through his like bag real quick and he pulls out this like huge slab of jerky that he's had drying in his place and he's just like hey offers it to star star seems distracted um by the jerky uh like there's equal parts joy at you know seeing bren uh 
and then distraction from the the jerky and then you know trying to convey something um the one there is one thing that is a little bit different this time than your previous uh, interactions with star star previously had always done kind of a tap on your mind you know that that gentle tap on the shoulder to get someone's attention that was how star communicated with bren previously where he just gently requested to enter into bren's mind and this time bren feels a flood of emotions and visual sensations and experiences enter his mind kind of all at once and he needs to make a wisdom saving throw Okay, you're good. You, it's of course chaotic, but you're familiar with how Stark, you know, the, the telepathic and empathic communication that Star has. So it's not too jarring. And you begin to focus your mind a little bit, your eyes go wide, um, and you start like trying to sift through. You, you almost respond respond with a, okay uh hang on hang on you know it's it's as if someone is talking at you a hundred miles an hour trying to convey something and you can't quite fully understand everything that they're saying but the one thing that you do get through um the chaos of that experience is that star is scared about something there's a lot of fear mixed in with all of that i'm gonna try to like again with with our connection to see if maybe they can show me what they're scared of like if there's like a mental image i know they won't be able to speak to me in complete sentences but like an image of what's frightening them yeah so bren absolutely says that out loud because you know that star can understand Mm -hmm. uh understand you verbally so you you start to convey that like you know slow down hey hey slow down what's what's the fear what's causing this show me what's wrong that sort of thing um and star seemingly like huffs and takes in a deep breath and exhales and you can see this like small uh green like gas you know exhale from their mouth um as they <sighs> and they let out that puff and they just stare at Bren. What are the rest of you doing while this is happening? Watching with an element of delight um, because a lot of the stress burden was <laughs> taken off of 80 with that. Um, I think though, like after a few seconds, she'd like, realize that she needs to be paying attention uh, and then she try to speak cool. I think Mira would uh, just be giving Sisk a quick recap of some of the previous adventures in the Siltwood and like, oh yeah, this is Star. Uh, this is who we <laughs> came out here to find. So like, that's good, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, I, yeah, I'm checking out the dragon, uh, and, but I'm also trying to keep an eye on the woods because I don't trust them. Good call. Yeah, same with Violet. I think Violet's just really anxious and almost like a fidget. She's summoning a dagger from her cloak and then dismissing it and then summoning it again, and then dismissing it over and over again, just to kind of keep her hands busy while the conversation's happening and watching okay as Bren as you get star to kind of focus up um, and show you what's wrong you have to close your eyes to take this in as all of a sudden you are overwhelmed by a very recent and powerful active memory as you're seeing from Star's perspective, a group of individuals moving through the Siltwood with 
ominous intent. You see their, the dark colors of their robes and armor. There's five of them. And anything that moves, they let loose magic to incinerate or a crossbow bolt flies out from a hidden, uh, you know, bit of cloth underneath of a cloak or one of them as a larger beast comes in like bear and such to respond to this threat. Another one just cuts the bear down with the swing of a giant greatsword. And they're just cleaving their way through the forest. And the vision takes place over the course of several hours, as if Star had been following them. You see it, you experience it, not in real time. You experience it in, you know, just seconds. But you know from that understanding and experience that it was, these are, these are Star's experiences of watching these individuals moving through the forest. And at some point, one of them turns and looks at Star, their eyes glowing with a blue sheen, as if they can see Star's and Star, even though he is invisible. And all of a sudden, bolts of magic start flying towards Star, and Star bolts away from the magic, barely managing to escape multiple times over from the magical assaults. Uh, Britain like opens his eyes very wide <clears throat> and he looks at everybody and go, we are in so much trouble. Um, it's the Nostromo. They're hacking their way through the Siltwood. Magic users, they were able to see Star even hidden. Um, it's really bad. They're, they're just tearing through the wood. How many were there? There was five. Five. There were five of them. Five. But just, just from the looks of it, from what Star can see, it's one of them's bad enough. I mean, can Star show us how to avoid them? I don't think avoiding them is the, the concern. I think if they keep going, who knows what they're going to do to the rest of the wood, what they're specifically looking for, or if what they're looking for is what we have. We, we have to stop them. Are they heading towards the mountain? Seems like it. There will be more, but we'll, we should cut off this head, maybe. Five of them, maybe. five of us. It's not, I mean, you're right. Normally I would be like, yeah, let's, you know, woo. But these five, like I said, one seemed overpowered enough and there's five of them. They have to have something going magically strong for them enough to see through stars, invisibility, or whatever they have. This is, I mean. We have Star strong. and the Ascendant on our side, so I think we'll be fine. <laughs> we also can surprise them, too. They don't know that we know that they're here. That may be the best way to do this. Um, I was going to look back at Star and ask them to point them in the right direction in which they saw him, or lead us to where they where they are. Bren, and I think AD picks up on this part too, Bren feels the fear kind of wash over, um, be projected into his mind from 
star. Uh, and he physically kind of recoils and almost like cowers down. Like if, if like when you see a dog cowering from someone raising their voice, even if it wasn't directed at them, that's kind of what happens in this moment. Hey, it's okay. It's hey. It's okay to be scared, but we're we're gonna help. That's that's why you called us, right? So let us help. Let us know where they are. There's actually some confusion that gets projected back to you when you say that's why you called us. Star, did you not call me? You get a distinct you get a distinct vision of star running away from something and your understanding of the way star communicates implies to you that that's their way of saying no star is there something else in the siltwood besides that group of people I can't quite convey in my own words of what Star's version of well duh would be (laughs) but that's kind of the best thing that I can say that Bren would all of a sudden be confused by as Star just kind of tilts his head to the side and gives him a look (laughs) Sorry, is there something else really, really bad that's not supposed to be here, here? You don't get any sense of affirmation on that. Okay. They're like it's almost sure like, it, like it's almost like, I mean, maybe, but probably not. Okay, uh, bigger problem. Whatever called us, me, you, out here was not Star. This meeting is strictly by chance. What? As as you say that, though, as you say this meeting is strictly by chance, um, Star pushes a memory of him searching for something. Like, like him, back. him like, bouncing through the forest, obviously looking for help. Oh, I'm so confused. You guys like looks at them like they didn't directly call us, but they were looking for help. Maybe I was just the first one to pick up. Like I, oh, uh, he's gonna look back and start going like, tell us where they are. Like we, this has to be stopped. Where are they? Give me a persuasion check. And I would normally give you advantage on this because of your relationship, Star, but it's also with disadvantage because it's definitely not something that Star wants to do. So. Okay. Uh, it's a 13. Okay. I'm sorry. No, it's um, a 12. I can't count. It's okay. Um, Star just kind of recoils and almost hides himself with his wings. I, uh, okay, hold on. Um, so what does Star want to do? Star wants to run away. Oh, I think maybe, maybe we send Star back to the the bigger group where they can stay safe and we just keep going uh, no one's gonna understand that this, this dragon just shows up they're not gonna i mean star can stay invisible well, 
we're really gonna look at Star one more time, but this time it's gonna be in the sense of like a frustrated pet owner. Like, did you do this? But he's gonna ask him like, you wanted help. We're here to help. You need to tell us where they are. And then after you show us, you can go hang out at my farm. Okay. As you say that, Star kind of comes out from their wings and there's an obvious reticence to things, but they stare for several long moments at Bren. You can see in their golden hued eyes a contemplation that's going on. But then after that pause, they just kind of nod a little bit and they take off and jump up into the branches of one of the trees further away from you and then look back at you as if beckoning you to follow. Let's go. Yeah. You all continue forward and are led over the course of the next hour or so by star. The trees do that shifting thing a couple more times, but you recognize it. You don't get lost by it. Kay, if you could, please have Sisk, or please roll for Sisk a insight check. Oh, no. At disadvantage. Okie dokie. Wish me luck. Good My luck. <laughs> so a 13 and a 3. So I guess we're going with the three and let me see what the, what do I add? Remember, you have an advantage from uh, Varlby Gem that you could use if you want to. As a, so then I can even it out? Well, you can just roll a die and take whatever that die is because you're probably not going to get worse than three. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay, I will do that then. Awesome. Thanks, Varl. Thanks. Uh, okay, so 11 plus 3, 14. 14, okay. You almost feel like the forest is changing its shape in the same way that you have done when trying to evade someone. When wow. you're like going through a crowd of people or through a town and you'll go like one block and then shift into someone else and then you know, do that again, like a little bit later. That's kind of what it feels like for you right now. The, I'll say out loud, the forest is playing keep away. They don't want us, it doesn't want us You don't us know to if it's them. you. You don't know if no. it's you. Hmm, keeps changing. I think we gotta be faster. because you haven't gotten lost by this. But regardless of all of that, Star keeps leading you away or leading you deeper into the, the wood. Um, eventually, you start to hear up ahead the sounds of water, a babbling brook, as it were some amount of river uh, or stream echoing off of some of the trees, echoing through the canopy ahead. And very, very faintly, Aidy starts to hear voices, an argument of some kind up ahead. Star pulls up and waits and just sits in, an, in a treetop above as the rest of you kind of move forward to where he stopped. And that's when AD can hear the sounds of the voices. Stop. I, I, I can hear 
there's some stuff. There's people. If I just like okay. chill and try to listen for a sec, is it is it too far away to make anything out? Do you want to use your passive perception or do you want to roll it? I want... For what it's worth, I already gave you the, what you've got currently because of your passive perception. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to roll for it because I like to live dangerously. Nope, 18. <laughs> um, yeah, you hear the argument up ahead. Uh, it's not... I'll give you this much. It's not a heated argument. It isn't like two people about to throw down. It's more two people having a disagreement over facts about something, right? They're debating something and the debate is forceful, but no, nobody's about to like, it's not coming to fisticuffs, basically. You mean an eight ounce swallow could carry a one pound coconut across the <laughs> inlet? <laughs> um, I will very quietly relay that information to my friends and do some hand signals, like try and convey, and nothing happens, and then I just whisper again, like. We, should we get closer and listen in? Yeah? Okay, great. Why not? And uh, <laughs> Aidy will uh, very, very carefully <laughs> start walking towards the voices that we're hearing. Every decision feels like a bad decision tonight, okay? <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll need, stealth up, too, if I can. Uh, yeah, I need stealth checks from everybody. Oh, dear God. Right, everyone check your sheets to see if you have passed without a trace. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would be you out of everybody here. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to give <laughs> Bardic Inspiration to Bren, because I feel like he's not very stealthy at the best of times. He has been seen as a bear on more than one occasion. Yeah, it's not wrong. Um, it's a d6 if you want to use it now. Thank you. I got 16. Cut 21. 11. What a natural 20 for 27. Nice. Ooh, uh, I got a natural 20 for a 21. Brilliant. Is is Mira, now that she's got her wraps on and she's like feeling really cool, is she like... <laughs> is that I think like her hair she's... is getting stuck in the trees. And so she's like... <laughs> <laughs> That's why you break she's getting hair, like okay? snagged by a whole bunch of, a bunch of branches. Yeah. 100%. 100%. That's what's happening. Um, cool. As you guys continue uh, advancing forward, moving so slowly, you can see in front of you the forest seem to kind of settle down a little bit almost from what had felt almost like the chaotic experience of it before. It's almost as if wherever you're moving to, wherever these individuals are arguing, it is unable to control, to put forward that chaos that it had been doing around you. Bren would know in this moment that this is the natural state of the forest. As you have stepped in proximity to whoever these arguing individuals are, and there is a resistance that is manifesting. It's almost like a it's almost as though he stepped forward enough that he can feel an aura of some kind of magic that is forcing the natural defenses of the Siltwood to behave. That it is preventing the chaos, the, the natural chaos that comes from the Siltwood and its 
defenses from manifesting. And ahead of you, you see a very small pond in a clearing of trees. A few of these trees, very large and very old in the distance. At the edge of this pond, opposite from where you move up to this clearing, you see five individuals in the shadows of the forest, some magical dancing lights kind of floating amongst them. Lights similar to what 80 can summon. Several of these individuals look as though they are dressing wounds. One of them stands kind of at the center of it all. An older man, long, white beard, dark cloak around him, and an impressive looking staff that he holds in one hand. And he seems to kind of just be surveying. A couple of the others that aren't necessarily dressing uh, wounds, standing there kind of arguing with one another, feeling as though the forest is getting them lost, that they've been doing this for days now, and they should have been through it by now. They're getting sick and tired of this place, and the term cursed woods comes up several times in their argument. But as you watch them, you can see that they are angered, all of them in some capacity or other, angered and stressed at whatever this situation is. But judging from their conversation, you're fairly certain that they had wanted to no longer be here by this point, and that it's only the defenses of the forest that they're not able to easily hold at bay with whatever this magical aura of theirs is that has kept them here. Because you also know that they entered these woods days ago, and they should have been through it by now. They don't seem to have noticed you, despite Mira's tangled hair and muffled cursing at whatever these moving branches are doing. What do you do? Bryn, who's like, with that awesome stealth, he's been kind of like crawling around like this. When he sees that, he like kind of spins on his heels and looks at everybody and he's like, oh, he's the clergy. These, these are it, right? That's the, these are the Nostromo. I've never seen one up close. You have. You interacted with oh, Nostromo in the tower, remember? They weren't armored like some of these individuals are. But I guess that's even where the Bren, would be. Even Bren okay. can get some of the, um, can, like, you ask your companions for confirmation, but you have a yeah. pretty distinct feeling that these are Nostromo. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Take them out first, ask questions later, or? I'm not willing to ask anybody questions. <laughs> Good, okay. The thing is, though, I think what they're doing is keeping the force from its natural state of things. Because remember, when we were here last time, it's a little crazy. Force knows us now, but then it did it. They're not acting the same. I think that's why we kind of got that movement when we were coming in. Anybody got anything that could maybe, I don't know, stop that before we jump in? The forest, I know that the forest, I think, is keeping them in. It's been stalling their progress. I don't know about how to stop the, whatever the Nostromo is doing. Um, I don't know. He's looking at Mira in this one. What you got? I don't know. Sorry, I put my cell phone. Somebody texted me. Keep going. Friend, we're stealthing. 
Yeah, I know. I didn't think Verizon got service out here in the Silver, okay? <laughs> I I mean, if we're if we're gonna you know, handle this, um I I can be invisible. I, I can have someone else be invisible too. They can as as you say that um, you hear a very faint, like, hiss up above you. And you look up and you see Star standing there. Okay. I think Star, Star is saying that yeah. that effort would be useless. They can uh, see through their invisibility, so it would be yeah, worse. Yeah. As you say that, Bren, you see a vision, a, 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 a truncated version of the memory from before of the man with the staff looking at Star with his slightly shimmering, glowing blue eyes. As if to imply oh, that that's the man that can see invisibility. Pokes his head out. It's the guy with the staff. That's the guy. Um, I think Sisk is right. I think we just go in, ask questions later. Uh, we take him by surprise. Okay, so we just mean? jump out and fuck it. <laughs> For what it's we worth, guys, also, out. as you're observing them, it looks like they're equivalently, they're taking a short rest. Oh, okay. We we stay away from magic, maybe for the bit, the first bit, try to take out Mr. Gear with the staff and see what happens. A little brawl. If you want to mold the earth around them and trap them, slow them down. I do a little molder and hold on. Do you guys, would you guys like to see a battle map so that you can perhaps plan yeah. a little bit based on that? Why don't we, uh, why don't we Boy. put up a battle map? Battle map! This feels like it's going to be a big enough fight that you might need one. God. So you guys are technically still over here. Oh, jeez. Okay. That's where I think they you're at anyway. I mean, we could do like a surround him kind of thing. What? Just we're brainstorming. Okay. Uh, okay. Surrounding. Okay. Um, that's not a bad idea. I, I think. I think we'll be able to knock these guys out. It's just the guy with the staff is a big issue. I can potentially... Can we just focus on him? Initially. Hey, Deb, can you get, go ahead and roll a spellcaster ability check for me for Mira? So this would basically be um, a charisma saving throw for all intents and purposes. You could go ahead and just roll it that way if you like. Eleven. Okay. Um, Mir's feeling pretty confident that she can throw down with Mr. Dork with the staff over there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You put on <laughs> one set of elbow-length gloves and... <laughs> Look, now. I'm fancy now, okay? <laughs> So I've been taking Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu here recently, and you know what? <laughs> Listen, I'm not great brawling. Um, I can drink a person under the table, but fisticuffs is not my game. So, um, I I don't know. I, I can try to take staff guy. I mean, what if, like, all of us at the same time try to take out the staff guy. 
and what about the wise. four other dudes? Widow? Yeah, we we mop after we're done with the staff guy, then we can mop up with the other, you know, but I think we target the magic guy first and get him out of the way so that he can't buff them. Yeah. I think Mira's understanding of the clergy and particularly the Nastromo, she would know that even the dude that has a giant sword in his hand, he's going to have some amount of magic. Right. But it's fairly obvious to her that the older man with the long beard and the staff that we have lovingly named staff guy, um, staff guy he is probably the most powerful of the magic users amongst them. So I've labeled that guy staff guy um, and I'm going to label big sword guy down here for you. He's down at the bottom. Uh, he's one of the ones that uh, is binding his wounds. Um, the other three don't have any obvious. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll say that this guy right here, who is also binding some wounds, um, he has uh, what appears to be a heavy crossbow leaning against him. That's kind of um, that's somewhat covered by his cloak. So I'll give you that. But the other two guys, the the one with the, the pointy ears and the other one with the uh, long hair but no beard, it's kind of hard to tell what kind of weapons they build. Sis, what if you disguised yourself as a, a, a person in distress? You heard that there were... Oh, I guess I, I don't know that they were just shooting everything. Um, yeah, I guess, yeah, that's... <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? They were shooting everything when they were coming in. I did see that. Maybe not the best look. We can go for the injured guys and the and the guy with the staff, and then. Do we just want to run in? Do we just yeah, want to run in? I think so. I need to get. I yeah. want to get kind of close up. Uh, I can. I, I mean, I could start with an Eldritch Blast or something just to catch them off guard um, and get a hit in before they're... I think we can all do that. Yeah. I think we all just target one person and fire at once and then run in. I mean, all that right, here good. we go. I'm getting antsy. I don't know. I just want to... Let's do it. Let's... Uh, f- uh, Let me get 30 feet closer in the tree line <laughs> and then uh, let's let's start. Oh, uh, how big is this? Like they're humanoid, but would they be considered medium or small? Medium. medium. <laughs> Can I turn into a gnome? Is that allowed? Uh, not a gnome, but you could turn into a very short dwarf. But still medium size. Technically, which, that would still be medium sized. What's your What's your walking speed, sis? I think it's just thirty. Yeah. Although, oh, hold up a second. No, never mind. You've got some time for setup here. You guys have a, an opportunity here based on your stealth checks from before. You have the jump on them. They're obviously. I mean, the staff guy is looking around, so he's on alert. Uh, he's effectively on watch but he hasn't noticed you at this distance yet. He might get another, another opportunity if you try to reposition yourself where you're going to be closer to him, but he's the only one that appears to be on alert. The rest of them are either eating, uh, finishing up, you know, a light meal, or as I kind of said before, um, dressing some obvious injury. Let's go. Oof. Mika, how how um, how deep is this body of water? Um, you know, well, hmm. give me a nature check. And the only reason I'm not just giving it to you outright, being a druid, and I'm letting you do a nature check instead, is anybody else would not know at all. Uh, and this being a forest, siltwood that it is. What is that a natural 20? 
Yeah, I'm actually kind of upset that it's on a nature check to see how deep a pond is, but <laughs> we'll keep it. Keep it, man. Hey, take yeah. all the natural 20s you can, dude. Don't ever shy away from those. Uh, you know very clearly that this is probably a deep pond. Um, just kind of the way that the magical lights that are floating around the space uh, are reflecting off of it and don't go... Uh, don't illuminate very much of it. Um, you know that the light uh, is not actually going deep enough to connect with ground. So it it's probably twice. it probably is shallow, like the first five or so feet from its edge, and then it plunges deeply. Okay. Um, this is what we're going to do. One of y'all is going to make me invisible. I am going to dive into that pond. At that point, it's distraction enough. If we get them in the water, shark bait. I could at least take out one real quick. He will probably see you coming. I'm gonna run. Well, we shouldn't waste. Why be invisible? Why be invisible? At that point? <laughs> because at least if I'm invisible, I can get. I don't know. I can get fifty. It, it's. 30 the feet. The magic right? guy can see you either way. He can yeah, I just you. need a little space. <laughs> I mean, you do you, bro. Whatever it takes. Well, I don't see us doing anything else other than, like, should we run in? I am He's not going to get a uh, spell her bow. slot on you, so someone else is going to have to do it. I'm going to look to Mira and just say... I'm going to make a rash decision. Staff guy? Yeah. Staff guy. Okay. Should we all aim for the staff guy? Yes. Okay, yes. cool. He's fire, it, it, it firing up a guiding bolt. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's roll some initiative, guys. Uh, no. I see Is this not a surprise round? <laughs> so they can be surprised okay. and not get to go on the first round of combat. So remember, surprise in, in 5e is a condition. It's no longer a round thing. Um, I saw Sisk, however, move close in there. Uh, yeah, I need I another. I need another stealth check from you, Sis. Okay. Oh wow. You guys can also, as long as you stay within what is obviously like tree slash shrub area, uh, you could reposition yourselves if you would like before um, or right now. Let's go, Roman. So good. Um, I got a twenty-three on my initiative, and then I got a twenty-one on my stealth. Nice. Yeah, he does not. Um, does not see Sisk. Uh, what did you get, Bren, for your initiative? 17. Okay. Mira? 15. 80. 21. And Violet? 9. 9? Okay. Awesome. 80 won't let go of her hand. She can't do anything. <laughs> face of this guy were really red just kidding guys <laughs> they're not holding hands still gonna, there was a whole rest in there <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need I'm gonna need that back now <laughs> <laughs> love it love it okay uh, so um, they are in fact all surprised uh, I noticed that the rest of you did not move your tokens so does that mean you're fine with starting the combat from where you're at hell yeah yeah, okay. I can reach. Cool. Uh, you are going to have full surprise on these guys in the first round of combat. Even the gentleman that uh, is watching did not do well enough to uh, to get past your stealth checks. So, Sisk is first to act. So basically, as everybody else is, like, standing over there arguing about what to do and when to go and who to target and all that, Sisk snuck away, moved around to the edge and uh, is just at the very edges of the shrubbery leading into this clearing. Shrubbery? Yeah, like the grassy area with, you know, plants mm -hmm. and stuff. Did you think you were muted, Kay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little bit. Um, and you see Bren, like, 
you see out of the corner of your eyes some magic because you know where Bran is and you see some magic kind of starting to manifest in his hand. And that's your signal. That's your go bo- go button. What do you do? Yeah, sick. Um, I am going to see if I can't summon my sidekick blades. Do they appear? Yeah, absolutely appear. Sick. So like my, my little arm blades and I'm just going to fucking run in from the woods 30 feet straight up to the staff guy and I'm going to take two swings. Nice. This is the best. Uh, he has not gotten to act, so he does not have a reaction <laughs> to be able to do anything about this. Uh, you go running in. As you come running in, though, he does turn and look in your direction, and there is a sense of surprise on his face as you close in, psychic blades uh, in hand, uh, start attacking. You have advantage on him, too, because he's surprised. I'm going to say also that I look like my changeling self. I'm not Sienna. I'm like, I'm going to go full weirdo. Let's go. I have, um, I have, I have a Sisk token. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> and then Sis comes out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, clothesline. <laughs> Just let's cut them up. Uh, so the first one I rolled a nat one. I'm going to use the uh, advantage that I got from Varl. Nice. Thank you. Uh, that's a twelve on my first attempt. Twelve misses. Okay. No. He, he does have a little bit more dexterity than that. Uh, my second is a dirty 20. Dirty 20 definitely hits. Okay. Oh, so it's a I'm trying deep. desperately right now to keep Galahad from sleeping on my keyboard. He's like leaning heavily upon my hand. <laughs> Buddy, come on, dude. Uh, I'm trying to find I have something uh, here we go if I hit a creature with my weapon attack uh, with my psychic blades I can use a bardic inspiration to deal two extra d6 psychic damage hmm? may I thank you All right. sure I'm not going to stop you from doing that he might want me to okay so that's 2d6 hey another round of uh, bits from Varl to give everybody another advantage amazing Thank you very much. Okay, so that is nine altogether, I think, unfortunately. But um, <laughs> you had advantage on that, so technically your sneak attack also applies. You're, you're muted. Uh, I don't have sneak, sneak attack. I'm an artificer bard. Oh, that's right. Sorry. For, for some reason there, I thought that, oh, it's because of the psychic blades. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. It's that special psychic thing that made me think rogue in my head. Sorry. Uh, so, yeah, nine damage. Great. Um, so what does this <laughs> look like uh, as you um, cut into into this guy? Oh, I think maybe uh, uh, clothing and stuff or or there will be cuts in the armor. But if if he, I cut like through the arm, there is no blood or anything. It's just all internal damage yeah so these purple gashes of psychic energy kind of uh manifest across the the physicality of the form for a brief moment before uh he recoils in agony and his hand naturally moves up to his head uh as you just cut into his uh into his psyche brilliant that brings us to 80 perfect so um <clears throat> 80 is going to stalk forward a few feet towards the pond and um, holding her hands out, she's going to channel the primary emotion that she is feeling right now, which is fucking rage. Um, thinking about what these pieces of shit did to her sister and to Violet and to Fig. And she's going to send out a uh, chromatic orb. This time, um, it's uh, it's electric, so it'll be lightning, lightning damage. damage if I hit. Oh, and um, she pushes both hands forward, and I'm going to twin the spell as well. So I want to hit the um, potentially. This is all, you know. Sure. Uh, sure, sure I would sure. like to hit the the uh, staff guy. And then I want to hit someone that's, like, not injured. 
yet. Okay, so the, there's a guy standing a few feet behind um, staff guy, so that makes the most sense. That's this guy here. Perfect. Yeah, that's great. <clears throat> so, let us see what the fuck I can do. Do we get advantage still? You have advantage on it right now because they didn't see you, so. Wonderful. Natural oh. 20 for a 27 to hit both of them? Maybe? Cool. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's definitely going to hit both of them. Um, what's your... <clears throat> hello. <laughs> you just scared Galahad. Um, what's your normal damage on that? It's 4d8. So now it's going to be 4d8 plus 32. Yeah, so 32 plus 16, 48 points of damage to both of them as lightning sort of like crackles around them after hitting them square in the chest. Nice. Um, so the guy that was... I say was because in a few moments uh, he's going to very much collapse to the ground uh, in a dead heap. Uh, the guy that was standing um, to the back of the uh, the mage guy, um, he doesn't even see it coming. He looks in the, the direction of Sisk uh, because he saw Sisk and saw what he did to to his ally uh, and starts to turn and you see his hand like going under his cloak and then all of a sudden this ball of fucking lightning just blasts into the side of his head turns half of his head to like ash and he just collapses to the ground in a heap um, for what it's worth however the blast of lightning that slams into the mage guy does slam into him and it ripples all across his form and he screams out in agony but it's not as effective as it was as it just blasted the hell out of the other guy um only other thing I'll do is continue to move forward uh coming around towards them a little bit okay nice that's it. um in case that wasn't description enough for you, Beth, you are fairly certain that he is resistant to lightning damage. Son of a bitch. You know, I go with fire most of the time. I thought I'd have fun. I know better now. Um, so... This gentleman, the pointy-eared gentleman, um, stands up, uh... He was already kind of standing, but he is alert to everyone. He doesn't get to act this turn, but he's definitely alert to everyone now. Uh, it is now your turn, Bren. <clears throat> We're going to shoot a guiding bolt at the guy who stood up. Okay. Okay, you've been doing all good all night. Give me something. Uh, 13. Uh, your guiding bolt goes wide. Advantage, because surprise. I, wait, I'm just going to use one of my advantages that we got, because I have those. Technically, you didn't move forward, and he didn't pass his perception check to see you. You do have advantage on the on the attack. You tell me twice. Uh, 15. 15 also misses. Seriously? Yep. Okay. Um, you can see uh, the glimmer of darkened metal armor under his cloak. Oh. So you could use one of those advantages from Varl now if you wanted. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, why not? Please don't be bad. You know, I'm just going to sit here. And uh, I'm going to the, the guiding bolt does, in fact, go wide after after all of that effort. Um, and as you kind you do have to kind of emerge from the trees a little bit to do that. Uh, and as you do so, um, do you see him look in your direction as he definitely knows the source of where that guiding bolt came from? Still have your bonus action and your movement. 
I'm going to use my bonus action to go into my starry form of the archer. So I can have that next go around. And I'm going to take my movement here. Excellent. Love it. Uh, it is Mira's turn. Okay, uh, Mira is um, going to look at the staff guy and uh, start waving her hands a la things she learned at school and a little bit of glittery light appears over his head. Um, she's casting Hex on him and then is going to send an Eldritch Blast his way. Nice. Twenty-two to hit. Twenty-two will hit. All right, nine damage from the Eldritch Blast, and then another two from the Hex. Excellent. And she is going to give him disadvantage on Constitution. Okay. And she'll move up by her sis. Brilliant. Okay. Um, Violet notices the other two individuals that had been bandaging uh, kind of go for their weapons. So they don't get to act, but you know now that they technically go before Violet. Um, and that brings us to Violet's turn. Um, Violet will notice that everybody's kind of stepped ahead of her and she'll take a moment and close her eyes and take a deep breath um, and she'll use her bonus action um, you guys don't see probably because you're in front of her but she's gonna summon a pair of spectral wings that slowly form out of her back. They kind of vibrate with arcane energy. Um, and she's going to take a step out of the forest, pull her short bow out, and shoot at the staff guy. Nice. Um, the others don't notice that. 80 does. 80's passive perception is not is enough that she catches the the movement out of the corner of her eye, uh, and she turns and looks and sees Violet stepping out with these magical spectral wings emerging from her back. Cool. You do have advantage to attack do the. I? Natural 20. Damn, guys. Kill them all. Okay. <laughs> okay. I had to set the expectations low by completely whiffing it. So, <laughs> I mean, you didn't completely whiff it, but. Right there with you, you buddy. <laughs> <laughs> How about the damages? So it's 1d6 plus 4. So it's whatever I roll plus 10. Uh, don't attack. forget your sneak attack. What What's your sneak attack damage? 3d6. Okay, so that's uh, what? 4d6 plus 28? Sorry, say that again. 4d6 plus 28? Oh my god. So many dice. So it's 7 plus... 13 plus 26? Uh, 28. Eight. So 13 plus 28 or 20 plus 28? Because I don't know how you were doing the math and I'm not looking at your rolls. So. Oh, God. So I rolled 1D. Okay, I rolled 1D6. That was 7, and then I rolled... Well, I couldn't have been a 7 on a D6. That probably added the plus 4, so that should have been yeah. a 3. 3. Plus 13, which is 16. So 16 plus 28, so 40, 44 points of damage. Yeah. On on the mage guy. Yeah. 
Okay. You, so your bolt, uh, this, oh, it's a short bow, so it's uh, your arrow, goes flying across the, um, the space. It splits in between Adi and Mira, and he just watches it come in. And you see him trying to move out of the way, unable to do so, as it pierces him square in the center of his chest. And he staggers back, and his hand comes up and clutches onto the arrow that is now lodged in the center of his chest. Would you like to do anything else? I think you've still got some movement left. Yeah, I'll move, uh, so then I'm... in between my friends... You move uh, to in between your friends. Um, the staff guy is looking at all of you, and you can see shock upon his face. And as he stares at you, moving, darting between each other, you realize that he's not kind. He's not looking at you individually and afraid he seems to be calculating in his mind as he looks at each of you and while he's definitely in pain and agony from the very lethal blows that were levied against him doesn't seem to be he doesn't seem to be ready to give up just yet and that brings us to the top of the round. To Sisk. Get him. Sweet. Sweet, 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 sweet. Um, okay. I have, I'm having fun with my blades. So I'll continue with that. Um, okay. Uh, oh, let me roll two to... So one of them is a, a 22, and one of them is a nat 1. Uh, I'm so going to use... Okay, are you going to use an advantage on the nat 1? Um, No, I'll be fine. I'll just hit him with one blade. Okay. Um, you go to strike, one of your blades goes very much awry, and you try to use it to kind of get uh, him more in line for the other blade and just as it is about to connect you see his hand twitch ever so slightly and a magical shield mm. emerge in front of him and your blade deflect off of the shield okay neither strike hits I pout and I end my turn At the end of your turn, he takes a legendary action. So no, yeah, he does. Um, I'm fairly certain that everyone is within sixty feet of him. Bren is not. Bren is the only one that has that is not within sixty feet of him. Uh, I need for each of you to please make dexterity saving throws. DC 16. You all see him as he's doing his calculations, clutch his staff in both hands, and an aura of radiant light pulsates up into the sky out of the staff, and it arcs and splits in f into four different bolts and then rains down on each of you from above. What'd you get on your deck saves? And did anyone not get a 16? I used my other advantage from Varl to get a dirty 20. Nice. Miro? 21. Violet? Before. And 80. Natural 20 for 22. Nice. So you all do succeed, uh, which means that you're not blinded. 
um, as this radiant light slams down in your space. You cover your eyes. Uh, you do, however, each take uh, 20 points of radiant damage from the blast uh, as it slams down in your area. You don't have evasion yet, right, Andrew? No, not yet. Okay. Could I shield um, 80 with a wing? It's that has to be on an attack roll, right? Or I, th I think so. Yeah, this is not an attack roll. This was a, a saving throw based effect. So can I use arcane rebuke? Technically, you can use arcane rebuke. He did damage you. Amazing. Uh, so he has to make a dex save in response to that, right? Yes, that is a 16 dex save. OK, get him. That's a 14. Uh, Ooh, that's he's cool. got a good he has a plus six dex save. 32 radiant damage. Get right him. back at you, bud. Holy shit. <laughs> that's crazy. How do you want to do this? <laughs> yes! yes! Yeah. Um, you know, he has this, like, blast of, of radiant energy that comes back, and I think uh, Mira pulls out the gem kind of on a... just out of some sort of compulsion and just holds it out, and from the middle of the gem is this just burst of arcane light. Okay, and... I think it's force damage, not radiant damage for your arcane rebuke, right? Uh, yeah, you're correct. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, it, I guess actually, yeah, that would have mattered because he is resistant to radiant damage. And so uh, force damage, the, this blast of force damage just washes over him. And you can see in his facial expressions this look of shock finally, as if he had miscalculated and his eyes roll up into the back of his head as his body is thrown back several feet. And he falls to the ground dead. That's, that was amazing. Um, awesome. Okay. Uh, so pointy-eared guy, it is now his turn. Uh, he grimaces and curses uh, and um, says something uh, in some kind of muddled uh, elvish tongue that implies he really does not like anyone or anything at the moment. Uh, and he is going to charge over to Sisk. And as he charges to Sisk, you see appearing in his hand as if from nothing, as if summoning this blade from nothing. Uh, a long sword appears and as as his grip tightens on the pommel of the blade it alights with fire and he swings at sisk so that is a 19 to hit which i do believe hits that does hit yeah <laughs> okay uh, he does hold it in two hands as the, the blade comes down upon you. Uh, you only take uh, six points of slashing damage. However, you also take nine points of fire damage. I'm out. Um, as you drop in a blinding flash, he continues attacking. He attacks with his second attack, which... Okay hits with advantage it's an automatic critical you instantly fail two death saving throws can i do like a uh like a silvery barb situation on this one uh on the second attack you mean yeah sure cool uh, yeah, re-roll re uh, the d20. Okay. I got an 18 on the die. Um, that'll do it. Nicely done. What? 
Sisk is unconscious and down. Mission is clear, ladies and gentlemen. That, uh, let's see, he still actually, well, he he does have some movement left, but he's not going to use it because he's waiting uh, to finish off Sisk. Bren, you are up. That's great. Um, well, yeah, I mean, crap. I mean, I see that, so that's my concern. I'm just going to, um, we're going to launch a uh, guiding bolt at this guy. <clears throat> At the guy that uh, just laid Sisk, Sisk out? Yeah. Okay. Um, 23. Uh, 23 hits. Twenty two points of damage. Nice. Uh, you slam a bolt into him. Um, and he is kind of surprised as if he wasn't expecting that bolt to, to land and you see the magical aura wash over him, giving advantage on uh, whoever wants to attack that guy next, which is probably a number of people at this point, I would assume, given the responses that I see in chat. Are you doing anything else, Brent? Yeah, a bonus attack. We're going to, um, for my bonus action, I could do another attack on him, a ranged spell attack. Oh, from your archer thing? Yeah. Cool. So that'll be with advantage because of the guiding bolt. Uh, it's my... 14 on the die, so... Yeah, it's 14 on the die, but I know... Uh, does my bardic still valid? Yeah, you still have it. Nineteen to hit. Yeah, that hits. Awesome, awesome. Um, so he's gonna take an additional. Uh, great, an additional three points of damage. Additional three, you said. Yeah. Great. Are you moving, sir? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to keep it moving around here. Yeah, let's run that now. Awesome. Uh, that brings up Mira. Uh, can I walk straight this way? Or is no, that slow so, me down? No, it's, so the, much of that intervening space uh, is um, difficult terrain. That's what I thought. Okay. Uh, um, okay, I will move over. Yeah, you could get about there with 30 feet of then. Yep. Um, I am going to bonus action hex uh, the guy that just hit Sisk and brought them down. Um, so now they have a little glittery cloud over their head and Eldritch Blast. I'm assuming you're giving him disadvantage on con again, or is it going to be something yes, different? Yes, con again, yeah. Okay. And I have advantage on this hit from Bren? Uh, no, he used his own advantage. He used it. Okay, great. Yep. Fuck. That's 11. I think you still have some stuff from Varl, right? I do. Yes. Thanks, Varl. That's better. 21 to hit. 21 hits. Great. Seven damage from the Eldritch Blast. And then six from the Hex. Nice. Uh, as these bolts slam into him and then you see this like coughing fit that emerges and this like um, necrotic mist that comes out of his mouth, uh, from the hex, you can see that he is getting pretty injured at this point. Is that it? Yes. All right. Uh, crossbow guy sees Bren coming, looks at his friend with the very large sword, and just nods 
and look in Bren's direction and you see that they share a look, a look between them as if he has plans to deal with Bren. Uh, and he takes a few steps this way and he is going to shoot at Mira. So this is going to be, it's only a 14 to hit. Uh, that is my armor class. Okay. You take seven points of damage from the crossbow, uh, and I need for you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. 21. Okay. You feel a pulse of magic radiate over you emanating from this crossbow bolt. As the bolt slams into you, it disappears as if it had been somehow magically summoned and you feel it penetrating into your mind and you shake your head and push against it. You feel as though something just tried to disconnect you from the source of your magic. The end, or, uh, that's the end of his turn. Big sword guy starts walking this way. Uh, technically, I guess he has to go around a bit. Um, he's going to use his action and his movement, and he's going to close into melee with Bren. Large sword at the ready, as if he is about to swing down on you, but he doesn't have enough actions or movement to do it this turn. I blow him a kiss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, it is now your turn, Violet. Um, so Violet is going to run here, 30 feet of movement, and then um, bonus action dash to okay. get to Sisk. Mm hmm And then she's just going to take her, her rapier and try to slash at this guy. Or okay, can I help Sisk if he's like right there? I, I mean, you, you still have an action. Do you have a, a potion or anything to feed to Sisk? I never got a potion. <laughs> so no. Um, I mean, it would expose Violet to vulnerability, but you could tempt, attempt a medicine check to stabilize. So bad at medicine too. I'm gonna swing at this guy. Okay. Twenty-one to hit. That hits. Ten points of damage. All right. He is barely standing. All right. That's the end of the round. Top of the round is Sisk. You need to make a death saving throw, please, Sisk. Okay. Seven. Do you have any additional advantages to use? I don't I think you've got think one. So do I? You didn't you didn't use it last time in the, the combat round. You, you should have one advantage left. OK. Eight. That is three failed death saves. From Sisk. Attention, I have been murdered. 80 no longer feels Sisk. Cool. Is it my turn? Yes. Okay, great. So, um, 80 is going to uh, get to this motherfucker um, by 
using her movement and uh, where the pond slows her down, she will bonus action Misty Step so she can get okay. over there. Mm-hmm. Um, and then for my action, I'm going to uh, do classic 80 move and stab him in the throat if I can. You can certainly try. That's a natural 20, motherfucker. 25. Ugh, it's only a dagger, but, you know. He only had five hit points left, so how do you want to do this? Without remorse. Um, I think, honestly, I think she would, like, barrel into him. And whether or not he moves, because AD's not that big, that's fine. But um, I think I the think... magical momentum, you know, carries through <laughs> uh, as Great. she basically just leaps upon this guy, sinking her dagger into his throat and just carrying him to the ground, just buried into his neck, the blood gushing out and just covering her in his own blood. I think she's got about five feet of movement still after all that and uh she'll just sort of come around um between sisk and violet and the other guy here okay but let you kind of step a little bit there all right continuing right along uh that guy's now dead it is your turn bren for for right. what it's worth the big sword guy does look like he has injuries from before this fight yeah I kind of figured um, now that he's all up in my grill we're just going to jump on him with primal savagery okay I don't want to be here any longer <laughs> I was having such a good time I don't have any more advantages do I no Dang. <clears throat> cool. Um, I'm going to use my movement to more than likely invoke an opportunity attack, and I'm going to go... Carl oof. just gave you an advantage, by the way. Uh, uh, okay, we'll, we'll retcon that. <laughs> uh, I would like to use that. Thank you, Varl. <laughs> Gosh. All right. That was such a good, <laughs> awesome. So it's a 24 to hit. That hits. Thank you so much, Varl. Jeez. Um, that's not right. Did you just I, roll I, a D100? I, I, yeah, I did. That's weird. Why would I do that? Uh, okay, that's why, because it's next to the D10. Were um, you trying to roll 2d10s? Yeah. Okay, well, technically you did roll 2d10s. What were the numbers on the d10? I saw one of them was a 10. Well, it said one, it was a 0 and a 90, so I rolled the percentile dial. They're, they're next to the d10. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, so one of them was a 10 and one of them was a 9, so that's 19. Okay, I will take that. <laughs> it's not going to make uh, you ditch actual good numbers on the die result. Just trying to keep it honest i guess but yeah no 19 points of damage on on that one all right and then you're gonna take the opportunity attack as you leap into the water no i'm gonna stay here now now that i at least got a hit on him okay honestly probably a good call um okay that brings us to mira Um, i'm assuming well actually ian were you done you still had your bonus action technically it, it's a range. It would, it would be at a disadvantage. Okay, cool. Mira is going to move up to here. Um, she's going to bonus action hex. It's going to be con again. And she is going to cast poison spray. Uh, so this is a con save of 16. Uh, on crossbow guy? Yeah. Okay, cool. 
con is not great for him. Uh, that's a 15. All right. He's going to take 11 poison damage. Okay. And also six necrotic damage. Okay. He's looking pretty injured now, too, having also been partially injured from before the fight even began. Uh, it is now his turn. Uh, he sees the three ladies coming at him, uh, and he starts backpedaling. Uh, he was out of threat range from 80, so she does not get uh, an opportunity attack. Um, however, as he backs up, he is then going to... turn invisible you see him reach down uh into uh a pouch pull out a vial from his hand and chug it and he vanishes from sight the gentleman with the big sword looks at bren uh after you slashed him with your primal savagery uh, and he is going to attempt to return the favor. So his first attack, because he gets two, uh, is a 24 to hit. Yup, that hits. That is 19 points of slashing damage. Second attack um. is a 19 to hit. Yeah. That is 17 points of slashing damage. Help anybody. Uh, Help. Bren ju uh, just received a hail from Varl for another uh, advantage. <sighs> Thank you. I'm over here sweating. <laughs> um, and then... Uh, at the end of his turn, since he hits you with both strikes, I need for you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Uh, it's a 19. Okay. You feel an aura of fear radiate out from this man, this magical manifestation of pure fear coming off of him. Uh, and it attempts to pierce into your mind and you manage to push against it um, and you do not have to immediately run away in fear. That brings us to Violet. Oh my god. Um, Violet's going to try to get to Bren. So she'll do the same thing. She'll move 30 feet and then to here. Can't you fly? Yeah. Not not yet. Oh, what that's was right. That? The spec the what was that? things. <laughs> yep. <sighs> Can't reach. Don't you have a bow? Yeah. I'll shoot him with a bow. With a bow. 500 bits from the resident Canuck cleric coming in hot gives an advantage to everybody. For finishing off Swordman. Oh. Yeah, I guess everybody accepts Sisk. <laughs> so, 30 20. 30 20 hits. Five plus sneak attack. Uh, 17 points of damage. He is still up as the arrow um, slams into the back, uh, his back. Um, you see it kind of uh, break almost into um, a chunk of his armor that is underneath of his cloak. And he turns and like flexes his arm backwards. And you now just see like ha half of the arrow sticking up out of his back at this point. Uh, he's obviously in pain and obviously injured. He just doesn't care. And that brings us back to 80. 80 looks down, 
and sees Sisk's ashen gray face. Can I feel the the guy who went invisible and is running away from us? Can I still feel him? Like, did he just go invisible or did he fuck off give me somewhere? A, give me a perception check. Okay. Uh, dirty 20. I think you do, but it's pretty faint and okay. getting fainter. Okay. I'm going to cast C invisibility and start running after them. Okay. Uh, point your, move yourself in the direction that you think that they went. I can't see him yet. That's going to determine whether or not you can see him. Fuck me. Okay. Great. Uh, I mean, I think generally in this area, like over yonder. Okay. Uh, passive perception of 20. 21. 21. Sorry. Passive perception of 21. You frantically start looking around for him, and you can see him moving into the tree line here okay um I am gonna um I'm gonna I'm gonna oh, can I, I can't misty step can I because I cast a spell correct okay then I do nothing but stare at this guy <laughs> You stare at his back as you see him disappearing uh, into the foliage around him. That's going to bring us to Brent. You're muted. But I'm muted myself. Um, we're going to keep laying into this guy as best we can. Um, I'm not taking okay. any chances here either, so use that to advantage. I am so 22 to hit on the primal savagery 22 hits additional 16 points of damage okay how would you how do you think Bren ends this guy um so you know you see his fingers elongate to like these black talon claws and his mouth kind of opens up and it's just a slobbery fang mess um and he pounces on him right on his chest and you just see like arms flailing as he digs his claws right into the side of him okay you guys well i should say everybody but 80 because i don't think 80 is particularly looking in Brent's direction right now so violet and mira are able to see the savage assault from Bren as he unlo unleashes upon this guy. Um, we're still technically in combat rounds. Uh, Mira, it's your turn. You can't see the final target. However, you don't know the where he is at. Do you have something that you would like to do? I think that Mira would just run up next to 80 and ask if she saw him. You can respond. Yeah. I, I, I'm going after him. You, you go, can I go. technically point in his general direction, even Got though away. she can't see him. Um, 80 feels fucking wild right now. And Mira can tell. Can 
I... Does the hex give me any sort of, like, indication of where... No. No. Okay. You know that he's still alive, right? Right. Because your concentration is not broken, but... I'm just going to fire off an Eldritch Blast in the direction that 80 points. Okay. Uh, Roll um, 2d20. Take the lower of the result and then roll a d6 for me and just tell me what that result is without adding it to to anything. Um, I think that's a three on the lower d20. Okay. And the d6 is two. Okay. Uh, you incinerate uh, a chunk of tree as bark and chunks of wood go flying away from the force blast of your um, Eldritch Blast. And you do not connect with target. Is that it? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Haiti, with her amazing passive perception of 21, sees this man disappear into the trees, and she doesn't know where he goes when he disappears into the trees. He's just physically covered by the trees, and she can't see him anymore. He is fully fleeing at this point. Violet, it is your turn. The uh, Violet just goes and tries to see Sisk. Okay. We'll come back to the top of the round, which in this case is 80. So depending upon what your actions are here, 80, will determine whether or not you can catch this guy. Um, I, I'm going to run forward uh, in the direction that I saw him go all the while scanning. Is <laughs> um, yelling a free action? Yep. I think Bryn like yells out to him, "Ask the trees." <laughs> so eighty will start running. Oh, okay. And 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 she's confused, but she's like, "I, I don't know, help!" <laughs> um, to the trees. Uh, okay. And. <laughs> And just sort of like tentatively continue running forward, trying to see the guy. Um, okay. In whatever direction. You have, well, you made your decision. Roll a persuasion okay. check, please. Eighteen. Do you wish to use your advantage that you got earlier? From I Raven? I do. You asked, so um, I would like to do that. Much better. 25. Okay. 80. Hearing Bren, confused as hell, runs into the, the tree line and says, I don't know, help. And has to stop for a second as she starts to look. She does not see the clergy inquisitor anywhere. However, what she also does not see is a green light emerging from the pond of water. 
And that's where we're going to call it tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Dude. <laughs> no. <laughs> what?